Yes. Okay. Sean on. Yes. On okay, line. good. Ready? Yeah. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Thursday, March 14th, 2024 meeting of the Culver Town Council to order. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to remind all those in the room and those online that um, your participation in the meeting is your permission to be recorded and rebroadcast on the town's YouTube channel. Also, any uh, electric electronic devices, uh, please put them either on uh, airplane mode or turn them off. Uh, roll call, please. William Clevenger? Present. Bill Githen? Here. Sally Ricciardi? Here. And Jeannie Monroe and Dana Neer are absent. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, those of you that have an agenda, you'll notice that the third item on the agenda is the new agenda format. Karen, do you want to elaborate a little? I don't know. If you want to wait in case she calls. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Um, what we're trying to do with the new agenda format is we oftentimes will have. Nick Daniel for that. Oh, I was trying to get the board meeting. Oh, is it 6.30? Will you please, uh, please mooch yourself? <laughs> this is an example, yes. Um, anyway, we oftentimes have guest speakers as well as public who want to address specific concerns. And what we realize is oftentimes putting it on the tail end of the meeting, that can sometimes make people stay maybe a little bit longer than what their business really is intended for. We're trying to be polite to our guests as well as people with concerns front load that. That is what we would call the public concern and utility ordinance violations. We can address those immediately, let people leave and get on with their lives if, if they don't want to stay and watch the rest of the meeting. The second section of public dialogue, would, well, let me return. I apologize. That concern is not open ended. With that concern, we'd like you to sign in before the meeting with a specific topic. We try to limit these to about three minutes of comments and directed. These are about specific concerns. And at times we can get distracted in a meeting, we can get off rail and it takes up time. Not that it's not important, but there are ways to remain focused and become efficient. And we'd like to try to get a little bit more efficiency within the chamber. The second section would be much more what I call a dialogue, which it's opened up between the council and the public. Oftentimes determined if there's, a, for example, some of the things that occurred with the dunes, some of the information, that kind of answer and question period where there can be an open dialogue without a timing, a little bit less formal, and that way we can have an open forum. So really with the concerns, we're trying to keep it tight, efficient, directed. It helps us focus, helps me focus, especially maybe to be able to address that concern, write it down and then follow up the next day with it. Then the dialogue section would be an um, open format where we can have a conversation about a specific topic, oftentimes probably initiated by the council. The dunes would be a good topic for that, be a good example of it. The rest of the agenda is going to move down. Uh, we'll hit new business. Uh, tonight we're going to be awarding the trash contract. Um, department reports, we're going to do those during the first meeting of the month. We're not going to make the departments appear every meeting or for both the meetings. We'll do the departments and the commissions will be the second meeting of the month. So we'll alternate those. Uh, just trying to be fair to our emergency service workers, police force, people who are putting in long days anyway. Um, you'll get my town manager report, which of course everybody's going to stay for because it is grouping. Clerks report, attorneys report, uh, council issues, and we'll adjourn. Most of that tail end is going to be very familiar to us. Okay. That's where we're at. We're going to experiment with it. Your dialogue and your opinion matters to us. You can email me directly with any type of feedback. And I always appreciate that. Okay. And that's what we're thinking. Okay. I'm going to excuse myself for just a minute. Excuse me. Anyone online have any comments? 
Anyone in the room have any comments on the new agenda? If not, I'd like to move on to the approval of the minutes of the February 22nd, 2024 regular meeting minutes. So moved. It's moved by Mr. Githens. I have a second. I can't second because I wasn't here. The chair seconds. Any discussion, Bill? Yeah, because uh, yeah, because I'd have to abstain because I wasn't here. I would just table it. Table. I will table that. Thank you. Next is the uh, Mr. Brian Carver of the Culver <coughs> Youth Organization. Thank you very much for your time. I also brought along with me Mary Boland. She's the new uh, director of CYC. She's helping me out with everything that we do. We're here tonight uh, to thank you all for um, the $2,500 that we received from the town council and give you guys a little bit of an update as to what's going on at CYC and uh, give you a little bit of an insight as to how the money's being used. Uh, we have seen um, record numbers of enrollment. We have almost 120 kids uh, registered from the school for the school year. Um, we've been averaging about 60 to 65 kids daily um, with a high of about 80. We're implementing new things every day. Miss Deb Palmer is going to start her garden club here uh, in a couple of weeks, and you'll see the garden boxes out front, everything blooming. Um, Mr. Paul Levitt will be there, and he's going to start his triathlon clubs, uh, cooking clubs we've been able to institute. Um, athletics, sports, intramural sports, and flag football has also been a big draw for CYC and kids in the community and school-wide as we've seen an increase in those kids coming as well. And most excitedly, we have our summer program starting. I'm sure if you're around town in the summertime, you see us walking to and fro to the lake, fishing. Um, so we're hoping we had a, a great increase. We almost doubled our enrollment from last summer, uh, from our very first summer to last. And we hope to continue to see that increase. Um, we were averaging about 45 kids, 50 kids a day during the summertime. And we would like to hopefully get closer to the 65, 70 range. Uh, we've got some great grant opportunities with the 21st Century uh, Community Learning Center grant uh, that's really going to help drive our educational and curriculum background. And we also have a wonderful staff. Um, we have a great group of high school kids and dedicated teacher's aides that have been working for us and with the addition of Mary. And we have Miss Liz as well. And we're here to invite you. Anytime you guys want to stop by and see what's going on at CYC, it's just down the road. And uh, the doors are always open. We'll give you a little bit of insight to see what's going on. They're doing a lot of great things, and we would be more than happy to host you. So uh, you can get an up close vision of, of where the money is going and how it's being spent. But again, thank you for the 2,500. We did receive that um, back in February. It, it, it's greatly appreciated. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is public concerns, utility ordinance violation or appeals. Anyone in the room for one of those? Any? Um, Ginger, I, I think you want to wait for public dialogue. Okay. All right. Um, anyone online for utility ordinance violation or appeals? Do you have everybody current? Okay. Next is public dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit more of a question and answer. Yeah. <laughs> Pre-flowing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So are we. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my name is Ginger Budges, and I live at 232 South Main Street, um, the Collins Apartment Building. Okay, I'm probably a little late on this, but I have a lot of questions because I haven't seen anything lately about the Jones. I understand that they're going to build two buildings in the beginning. Is that correct? Two apartment buildings? Okay. Four. And then um, my question is, okay, I go into Plymouth quite often for different reasons. And Centennial Crossing, I don't know if you've gone through there or not, driven through there. Um, within about a little over a block, they have nine buildings with 12 units in each building. That's 108 doors. We're going to have, I believe, I understood, 300 doors here. So that's 100 and some more that we'll have that they have there. Um, also, um, 
I'm concerned about the traffic because they say that they're going to go down 17 and over to 19 and come up. Um, I don't think that's going to pan out. I really don't. Okay, my other question is, okay, golf carts. Um, last year, I believe there were around 240 because I know I was uh, 218. Okay, so that comes to roughly at $60 each. That's 14400 or so. Um, with that money, I believe it goes into the general fund. Is that true? Correct. Okay. We as golf cart owners don't get anything for our money. We really don't. Um, luckily, the bikers who shouldn't have to buy a permit have at least signs up that say share the road. But I think it would be nice for the town to think about the golf cart uh, people, maybe have a couple golf cart um, spots that they could just pull into like a lot of other towns do. So anyway, I just thought I'd express myself on these couple things and doing a good job. Thank you. May I Thank follow you, up sir. with a few questions? Is that okay? When you say golf cart spots, yeah. you're talking like parking That'd account. be parking. That'd be parking okay. because in a lot of towns they have, you know, we just sure. pull into a little spot sure. and golf carts are much smaller than cars. So a couple other be. things with the, with the dunes development. A lot of those questions that you have are excellent questions, and we've we've discussed them. One of the things that we keep coming back to is it's really hard to get a feel for what the traffic's going to do. We know we're probably going to have some engineering. We're going to have to redirect and do some adjustments. One of the things that I've come to realize talking to engineers that are smarter than me is that they keep cautioning me against over-engineering and under-engineering. One of the things that may cause when the traffic study came through, they were giving me probabilities. But the one thing that, that is different than most of the probability studies is we have a giant variable that is unknown, mm -hmm. which is not, which makes us somewhat unique. One of the questions that remains and will mm -hmm. remain with is what will be the market mm -hmm. for this? Yeah. Are we going to get permanent? Are we going to get rep seasonal? So really what we have to do is get them online monitor that traffic and then start making the adjustments based upon real-time data or i'm afraid we're going to waste money either under engineering over engineering mm -hmm. so we really that's going to have to be something that's going to be done on the back side mm -hmm. with the apartments in in centennial i think when i looked at it we're going to be spread out over a larger footprint that doesn't mean i'm not trying to quelch anybody's concerns about this mm -hmm. but there is a difference between us and that they use that as a model but it can be misleading we have a larger footprint of ground mm -hmm. that we're going to be putting those units over. The first thing that you have to understand is that the phase one and two are guaranteed at 225 and some change, maybe units doors. Mm -hmm. Those second two phases, those last 70 or so homes, they're not guaranteed. They're based upon the market demand. Now, there's a likelihood they're going to build them because they're not dumb. They know their market. They know where they're at. Yeah. I'm assuming. It is something that we have to keep an eye on, especially with traffic and growth. Those are irrigated lots. That whole area is going to be irrigated and spread out. We're looking at the setbacks. Everything is in line with planning. But again, it's a fair concern. No, it is concerning. It is. So everyone I've talked to, no one, maybe just two or three people are interested in it. The rest are. Thank okay. You very much. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? Yes, sir. Uh, Russ Mason, 534s, please. Uh, Kevin, I read, I don't know, the newspaper or whatever, that we're talking about some type of a sewer utility study. I wasn't sure what that was. Could you explain that to me? Yeah, about? absolutely. So I, the reason I'm bringing it up. Sure, please. Is I was very vocal when we were talking about the dooms that, that we have capacity within the plant. Yeah. I don't want to find out now that we're not, we don't you're, have. You're, you're not going to. Okay. We have absolute capacity. All capacity studies remain the same. I stand behind the fact that we will still be running at most in July at 70% capacity. What we do realize is there's already pre existing conditions. Here's the problem, Russ. I'm going to. That dunes is going to go online. If they go 300 units, that's going to eat up available capacity. What we have to do being responsible and being fair to other developers into the town is we've got to make sure we recapture the capacity. There are pre-existing conditions out at the white wastewater that have been in need of repair. We need Ms. Western to come in and target those. One is one of the primary pits. Um, the blowers need replaced. We know some of this, but the study is going to look at that capacity where we can get that 30% or 20% that we may be using for the dunes back into the cycle. So all we're trying to do is find out where we can target to make efficient improvements. We do have the funds for it. We're going to use it to improve that wastewater and make sure that we have capacity. I do not want to not replace that capacity. Where's the where's the funds coming from? 
the sewer plan. What if they you wouldn't have to spend two hundred thousand dollars to bring the plan up to whatever your specs? Where's that money going? Right now we have this. We have we paid off one of the sewer bonds, and so the payments that would be going to that bond is now going. It's an advantageous time to so address it. So you're building a reserve. We have a reserve. That, that's exactly it, Russ. And this is why I think it's a perfect time to get it done. But I don't want to go into it blind. That's why the Midwestern study was issued. I, I guess my only criticism of the whole thing is why did we give the capacity away? Why did we? We didn't give it away. Why we're, didn't we have to develop? I'm going to stop you. I don't think we're giving it away. That's where we're going to disagree. We're putting capacity based upon a bond for growth. We're recapturing that TIF money and we're putting it back into the redevelopment. So it's an investment. We're not giving away that, but we do have to replace it. And we're going to generate more than enough funds, I think, for the TIF and warrant. So I disagree with the giving away. I think it provides housing, which was one of the priorities of the town based upon the 2040 survey. It's going to pay for the infrastructure that we got to run that we annexed anyway. And it's going to recapture over the 20 years for the residential, 25 for the commercial, a significant recapture back into the TIF fund that's going to help us with it. Now we can disagree whether or not we like the housing, but the numbers are there. And that's not me, that's Baker Hill. But thank you. I, I do appreciate it. I do understand your point. Anyone else in the room for public dialogue? Anyone online? No one's, no one's online now. Okay. Uh, yeah, new bill. Just please to identify yourself. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. It's, it's All right. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda is new business. The award of the trash contract. We received, um, during our opening, we received both, which I think everybody was here, Sally, maybe. Uh, we received two bids from Apex and Republic. Comparing the bids, uh, apples being to apples and oranges being to oranges, I'm gonna recommend the Republic Services bid. Um, they do have a monthly unit price at 18.56 for the residential. Three years, they have an alternative plan of an alternative bid that they put in. Year one would be at 1716 per unit. Year two would be at 1785 per unit. And year three would be at the 1856 unit. I was unable to contact Republic to find out if their alternate bid was still in. However, even with the 1856 bid uh, for the three years, it still came under Apex. Also talking with uh, utilities, talking with Julie Cal, our deputy clerk and Karen, we're looking at a smoother logistics of not having to switch over with cans and new routes. And obviously that will be a continuation for our customers. So the recommendation is gonna be for Republic Services for your consideration. I'll hand that over to you in case you have any questions. Thank you, Bill. And we have the option of either one to settle that tonight or do we do that? I think we can choose Republic and then we can reapproach them. Um, if you're to make if, sure that if you have a preferential bid, we can take it to Republic and say this is our preferential. Thank you, sir. I make a recommendation that we uh, one uh, set the bid from Republic and two that we go back to them and see if they'll still honor the uh, stair step over the next three years. Yes, sir. Increases. Mr. Gethins makes a motion. Is there a second? I believe I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Shardy seconds. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Bid awarded to Republic. Just for clarity, Mr. President, I do have your permission to contact the yeah. public. Director. Yes, okay. definitely. Thank you. Any, any other new business? If not old business. No old business? Okay. The farmer reports, EMS. Yeah, thank you, Council. Uh, 
nothing new with operations with EMS. Um, run smoothly. I appreciate Kevin appointing me interim director last week. I got that that word. I appreciate that. Um, I got a team together that we're all working very uh, smoothly and moving everything forward. Wes Coulter and Stacy Beckner are helping me with a lot of different uh, operational things of DMS. So I appreciate all their help. Everything's going smooth with that. So we'll be running the show until somebody gets appointed uh, a full time director. Why don't you state your name for all those? that are either online or... Mike Hazelfeld, paramedic. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Uh, I do have a bit, I'm sure a lot of us have heard the bad news of Kathy Hart's passing. Um, she passed away last Saturday. Uh, so this has been a sad week for EMS and a lot of the people of, of Culver. Uh, Kathy, as we know, has been a longtime resident working in EMS for over 30 years. Um, I got the privilege for, to work with Kathy. She worked full-time in LaPorte County EMS as well. And I worked for 15 years with her over there. So never got the privilege of working here with her. She had retired when I came over here. But Kathy, uh, you know, started almost as a volunteer, then working bet between the two different departments where she finally got appointed the, the director position here at Culver. And, and I really think her and a few others, but really Kathy had a lot to do with moving Culver EMS from just a volunteer service to a uh, full-time paid service, and, and she got it from just a, a basic BLS uh, and a driver type situation to where all the way up to advanced life support paramedics now. So where we're at now with, with the paramedic system is really a testament to Kathy Hart. So I just wanted to recognize her big loss for the community and, and for EMS. So. I was wondering, I wanted to bring it to the council to see if maybe there'd be a chance maybe down the road here, we could like plant a tree in her honor maybe in, in town at, at, at a park or something. Um, if I'm sure you guys have maybe done something like this in the past. Any, any of your thoughts or comments on maybe something like that? Yes, we had Jason. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a nice thing to follow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. That's you, man. Yes. Well, that's all I got. I got through that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike, very Thank much. You, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. I worked with her when I was a volunteer way back when. Who was that one? The 80s? Yeah. The 90s. My next. We were all volunteer back. Yep. Well, there goes fire. It said it. she was a yep. good EMT and a good person. Yep. Yeah, Kathy was outstanding. <clears throat> Sally and I both had the privilege of working with her. And wonderful, wonderful person. Well, we just shortened the agenda and there's no fire. <laughs> so. Please. I got one thing. I want to upgrade our camera system. Yeah. So, for that, for $2,027. Maddox services who installed the system to get it. Do, do you have it in your budget to cover that? I think so. If not, I've got other funds that we can get. Okay. I don't have any problem with doing doing that, you know, updating your cameras. Giving you people better security. Yeah. I'll make yeah. I'll make a motion to approve his request for cameras. I'll second. It's been moved by Mr. Sardi, seconded by Mr. Githens. Any further discussion on the cameras? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. 
Thank you, Wayne. Yes. Amber. Again, we finished certifying all of our lifeguards for the summer. So we feel really good there. Uh, we have all the numbers for staff. We're all set. We're starting the onboarding process for all 28 of them that will be joining us this summer. So uh, just working through that with Karen. Um, I started receiving calls to um, fix the exterior balconies on the beach lodge that surfaced. Um, I imagine at the next council meeting, I'll pre be presenting those quotes. I received one today and met with them, went through it all. The number came in at a very happy price, so feeling good about that. Hopefully, the next council meeting or the following one will have a recommendation of a quote. Um, we have our Easter egg hunt coming up Saturday, March 30th. Um, one of our bigger events, we usually get about 400 kids that come out. Um, fire department usually does a fire truck display, so uh, special thanks to them. Um, outside of that, uh, peer installation is going really well. Um, e peer is almost done. It is March 14th, so uh, that's, that's good news. Uh, we'll probably get ahead of the game, but that's, of course, anticipating the, the socket installation on C peer that we're doing. Um, we're just ahead so that we can address uh, the sockets on CP here and give ourselves some extra time to work on those. So um, yeah, things are chugging along though. I assume that since that even though there's no ice on the lake, they certified at a pool rather than yes. <laughs> in the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in a pool. Uh, we do our waterfront training uh, right prior to the start of the summer season. So uh, we just work it that way. Yeah. <laughs> I commend you on getting on the lifeguards. We used to have so much trouble getting lifeguards years ago. Yeah. What's your secret? Uh, I trained them. I became <laughs> LGI certified and I work my classes around their schedules. So I meet them. She grows her own crop. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Amber, I saw it notice out there. Is that your new piece of equipment that arrived the other day? That uh, John Deere? Um, it has not arrived. Um, there was one out there, I didn't. There, yeah, that's the old one. Oh, um, still running somehow. Um, but uh, I got enough to have me ship later, no later than April 18th. So, yeah, we're really excited for that. Nolan. That's coming up rather quickly. Yes, yeah. we're very excited. We're we're very happy the current one has got us to this point. We were nervous it wouldn't. So, um, yeah, we're excited to get the new one. I know the maintenance works with ours. All right, thank you. Bob, utilities. He's getting back from hmm? he's just getting back from his water conference down at Oh, he's okay. Town manager's report. You want a dunes report? We had some business there. We'll start off with the dunes. There's some new new uh updates for everybody that's Stuck around for the best part of the show. We appreciate that. Good evening. Uh, we had a special session of the TRC last week in which the town reviewed the plans for the dunes project, including water, sanitary, and storm with that focus. Uh, additionally, the Planning Commission conducted a work session on Tuesday of this week to review those plans. Uh, Scott Seipel from Midwestern Engineering has been vetting those plans for us, and we are very grateful for his input. He's been able to bring an engineer's eye, and it's much needed. Um, his recommendations to the developer on behalf of the town have narrowed it down to several issues um, that we are currently resolving, I think. Um, the TRC noted that the remaining requests from Culver Equities include the following, and the Planning Commission concurred. The high water relief designed for the northeast corner near the town's water plant, we were worried about the wellhead. We want to guarantee the 100 year storm rates indicate that that shouldn't be an issue although it is a flood zone mr Seipel from midwestern is worried about intensities getting that flood storm that either repeats over and over again or get that in a two hour period rather than the 24 hour calculation that it's normally we followed his advice mr bob porter myself and scott mr Seipel met with the contractors independently they have committed to putting the high water we've seen a draft of that Mr. Seifel is currently in the process. We shared that with the planning and the TRC as well. 
and Mr. Scott Seipel will be vetting that for Tuesday's meeting next week. So that's the Planning Commission's meeting, which they have a deadline to have that ready. Included, we wanted con confirmation of several calculations, including the main supply for water. Um, what we noted that the question is, should it be an eight inch main or a 10 inch main? We're, we want the right size main feeding the development, but we also don't wanna oversize it. Bigger isn't always better because we're concerned with water pressure in town. We do not want to oversize that and suffer from town standpoint. We also want to make sure the hydrants are adequately sustained during a, a, a event of a fire, a multiple unit fire. Um, we want to be responsible there. So we are getting those calculations. Uh, Mr. Seipel sent an email, I do believe yesterday, he has those calculations, has not ran the numbers yet. He will run all those numbers for the town and will give his recommendation. He will be here for the planning commission again next week. We look at him a lot during those meetings to make sure the numbers make sense. Um, we're confirming the wear size in the western detention area, just some of the profiling. That was kind of, Mr. Seipel used the word maybe nitpicking, but he wanted to see it and make sure everything was good. Um, there were a few issues with the sanitary, very minor. There was um, the state standard of IDEM only allows for an eight inch uh, sanitary pipe to go 400 feet couple of the manholes were at 407. They're going to redesign. I think there were two issues maybe. That cannot go to IDEM and pass if they don't correct those issues. So Mr. Seipel did them a favor. I would also like to note that the cost of Midwestern Engineering is being picked up by the developer. So that is the bills are being picked up by them, not the town, um, but yet they are working and vetting for the town. Uh, the planning commission also questioned the need for more teachers, school size, some of these various things with gross. Some of the same concerns that you had about wastewater and why, you know, they are taking capacity, but we have to replace it. And it is going to change our profile traffic wise. Some of these things are going to have to be monitored well beyond the start of development. They have to be monitored as we grow and move them and transition them in. So keeping an eye on those things is important. If they pass the planning commission, when that's still if. Um, we have talked with the developer um, on several different issues. Number one, the routing of construction traffic. I do not, and we re-emphasize, it cannot come through town, period, end of story. It has to be redirected to the county. And so I've asked the developer to be uber responsible, and they've agreed to it and offered to do it as well, to put up signs at 17 and 10, as well as Mill Street and Jefferson Street saying no construction traffic allowed. And of course that doesn't stop, uh, you know, <laughs> a tandem truck from coming through, but it should be a solid deterrent and it holds them accountable. Um, it is something that I think is necessary and I, we will be enforcing that. We will be watching it. Um, we also have existing issues. I know there's been some trucks down Main Street. I've had a talk with Lowe's one time. There was a Lowe's delivery truck, had nothing to do with the dunes, but I've had a discussion with them. I'm, I'm anticipating a question from the audience, maybe. Um, I hope that addressed it. Uh, the town has had three formal inquiries about the silt fence, by the way, installed mm -hmm. along South Main and West Shore. They're being a little presumptuous, maybe, and putting it along South Main, thinking the dunes is, is a done deal. Um, Fair enough, they uh, brought in a contractor to put up the fencing. It's cheaper putting it all in at once. They put it all in at once, plus it helps detain that erosion. So we're Hi. appreciative of it. Believe it or not, I've had two calls concerning the color of orange. They don't like the color of orange. Unfortunately, orange is more durable than black as I've, I've learned more about silk fence than any man should ever have to learn. Um, it's more durable, it hands up, it's more visible to construction workers, helps delineate the property better. Also, it's the color of the, you know, Homer Cavaliers, so we should be supportive of our local teams, right? That was supposed to be funny. Somebody give me a laugh. <laughs> that is the Dunes Report. Now the town manager's report, if I may. Yes, you may. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to, uh, Mr. Hazelbelt, uh, mention that I temporarily named him interim out of uh, need to report to state, but I would like your approval that appointment. And so I'm asking for a vote for Mike Hazelfeld to move on and continue as our interim director until we fill the position. So moved. It's been moved by Mr. Githens. There's a second? Second. Second by Ms. Rashardi. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
Thank you, Council, for that. Uh, secondly, as we transition, there, uh, speaking with Wes, uh, Mike, Stacy, there are still some things that they are not 100% confident of. They would like to detain or at least have on speed dial the services of Mr. Jeff Kuhn. We're going to uh, send it to the council an independent contract. It would pay him at his currently rate, um, would not pay for any type of gas, so we'll be judicious about how we bring him in. But in order to assist, if there's any more questions with billing, contracting, uh, medical technology, what was it, three o'clock in the morning phone call that Correct. Wes pointed out, which I appreciate, um, any of that stuff. So I would ask that we approve that contract. It's a temporary contract. It would expire at the end of May if, if it goes that far. And I ask the council for that approval. Can you describe the contract? Yes, sir. It's just, it's a temporary hour, no benefits. It is, pays them at its current hourly rate. It is arranged by the town of Culver to bring Mr. Kuhn in during preset hours that are determined by myself and the MS and we'll bring him in. We'll try to be judicious about it because we don't want to waste his time or gas coming from the port. So it may be three to four hour sessions. We're thinking, we were thinking maybe two, at least two in the near future. Right. About two about two and we should be through the transition. And I do believe I emailed, but I will definitely email that contract if I did. I didn't see it. We yes, sir, I, I will send that to you immediately yeah, after the meeting. Let's do that. Yep, I apologize for that. I'm sorry. Um, I'll make a motion to approve uh, contract to keep uh, Jeff on as a- Independent contractor. Independent contractor. Through the end of May, you said? Yes, sir. If need be, right. or do we terminate? I'll second. It's been moved by Mr. Sardi, seconded by Mr. Githens. Any further discussion? And the end of this contract is? Would be either at our discretion or may at the, at the furthest point. Yep. Okay, all right. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And I noted, I apologize for the oversight, I'll email that to you. Yeah. So accounts are absolute, sir. Um, updates, uh, the take home car policy is working out well that we've established for the police. It's being used. Um, just wanted to bring that to the council's attention. Um, okay. We've got the two new cars in circuit, almost got, how, where are we at? If you don't mind me asking Wayne, uh, with Tracy still in training? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, we put out an RFP for tree removal. Bob uh, is currently looking at uh, for tree removal, stump removal. Um, I also, this is, I did email, so I did remember this one, the code of ethics. I wrote a temporarily or a draft of a code of ethics for the town council, as well as town employees. Um, not a pressing thing, but if you get a chance to provide feedback on that draft, I would appreciate any feedback that the council may provide. Um, uh, yesterday, I attended the MEDC meeting, the Marshall County Economic Development Commission uh, in Argus. Uh, at that meeting, we discussed Ready 2.0 grants as well as Lilly financial grants. Lilly is putting in more money this year on an unprecedented rate, uh, 185 million for blight reduction, which includes teardown as well as historic preservation. Um, it is, seems like it has a few fewer strength than the Ready money does. 2.0 is, a little bit more stringent than 1.0 was. Um, additionally, Lily is putting up an extra 65 million to develop arts and culture projects. Uh, competitions, festivals, creating new public art displays and developing improving museums. There are wonderful opportunities there. And Lily's trying to bring, what they're trying to do is create ways of using art and culture to create economic benefit for towns and as well as enriching towns with their art, statues, sculpture, and excited to hear about that. We're going to begin discussions about possible projects here in the next couple of weeks. Had a meeting with Brant Downing um, of First Farmers Bank, CEO out of Kokomo, wonderful gentleman. I'd like to thank um, Leah Marshall for arranging that meeting. Uh, I was just attending that meeting in order to get information about what it would take to acquire that building, um, as well as what was First Farmers position on a footprint if we did acquire that building. Uh, I wanted to bring that to the town council's attention for your consideration if you wanted to move forward with the discussion or not. Currently in the discussion, I learned that Mr. Downing's 
maximum footprint would be 1500 square feet that would be the front area where the vault is basically where the clerk's desk were and um and he assures me that the town could acquire that at a low low price um, he pointed right down to the floor i'd like to see him touch the floor but that is for the council's consideration um he is supposed to get back to me with some numbers for your consideration and i'll provide those as they're provided to me uh the one thing i did find is the uh, redevelopment commission study of that building done in 2018 by Abermarsh, and the study is available in PDF form if you guys would like to see revisit that. Um, I can provide copies of that. I will also try to post that study online on our new website, by the way. Um, hopefully you're all enjoying that. <laughs> but uh, if you haven't, stop by, I'll take you on a tour, but we'll get that document out to y'all. And so you guys can also see where that's at. Um, excited about it. I do have a few reminders for public. We have starting April 1st on our wonderful website as well, Sidewalk Assistance Program. The document's there. Um, I can. There's also a way of downloading it for a hard copy if you choose that. We received the 2040 draft um, and the comprehensive plan, and it is now currently in review. I went around town hanging up flyers. You can get online. You can take a look at that 2040 comprehensive plan. We would really appreciate public feedback. Would really like to hear that. You can provide that directly um, through the email links that are provided on there. Uh, Monday, 318. For everybody who loves this time of year, it's the flushing of the hydrant. Sounds like the running of the bulls, doesn't it? Um, it was posted on the new website. We got the electronic billboards going. It is going to run from about 8 a.m. If everything runs smoothly, we should be able to get it done on Monday. Um, we'll put notice out if that changes. We are going to ask you guys, like always, it, as you flush a system, make sure that you run some water. Don't do your loads of white right afterwards, and we'll make sure that we keep everybody abridged. But we were able to get that notice out, and it's in the public. I think I'm pretty long-winded. That's it for the night. I appreciate your patience, Brent. Thank you. Thank you. We're not supposed to. No, please. Dollar bills for us. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, anyway. Bill, let's go back and get Terry's report. Soon. Yeah, we got Terry, and I think. We didn't put tree commission in there. Are you here for the tree commission too, John? It's for next time. It's next time. Yeah, it can be. Next time. Okay. All right, Terry. Uh, yeah, I just got two things to brush over again. I know a while back I talked with you guys that we're trying to the fire all the fire chiefs in the county are getting together and we're trying to have a dual response area, which we're still working with through the county. Time on one system, uh, we pretty much got a map out. We've got to get it put in to get it implemented. And once that is, that helps with our ISO rating. It helps with everybody here's insurance that was covered. So that's one thing that we've been touching on. And also, uh, I know we talked about it at the end of last year, we are starting the process of pricing out a new vehicle. This has been six years. Our trucks out so it's time for us to buy one which i don't think we're going to be able to buy for two years is what they're telling me but we're going to price one out and get it in line and start the ball rolling and that's it what truck are you replacing terry the engine the tanker is actually a little bit older but it's in a lot better shape because it doesn't roll all the time it doesn't learn every call the mm -hmm. engine does we're having some minor, we have minor complications with it every now and again, and it, and it's just uh, that is definitely got to be the vehicle that has to be. All right, thank you. John? You don't have anything, okay. Karen? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to provide an update. I forgot and I apologize to the public. We're still working with IU Tree Grant and we have provided them with a map of the city. I was going to mention that to you, John. And they are very excited about updating our GSI programs and giving us better um, coverage of, on, on the mapping. So um, I wanted to thank you directly for the tree map and some of the things that you've provided. They helped me today. So thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 
Do we have any more information on species? Or Not yet. Um, I'm hoping to hear back. They're kind of they're, they're kind of at the crunch of spring break down at IU. So I'm hoping that we'll find out some more. If I if I, if I lose sight of that, please bring that back to my attention. I'll try to get that answer. All right, thank you. Karen? Yeah, I have four invoices for your approval that are over $2,500. The first one is EJ Prescott for $3,066.25, and that is for materials and supplies for the water department. Um, Tim Juhas, uh, two, first two payments for peer installation for $6,500 total. Indiana Telephone Network, $3,550, and that is for the phone installation, which I'll, I'll discuss in a minute. And then the final one is EJ Prescott, $9,205.53. That's actually being reimbursed to the town by CMD. It's first the purchase of something that we purchased and they're reimbursing us for, and I don't remember what it is. So, um, but I'm just calling your attention to that. That is actually not an expense of the town, but there's a check for that amount going out. Motion to approve claims over $2,500. So it's been moved by Mr. Gibbons, second. second by Mr. Shardy. A further discussion, questions? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Approved. Um, I am working on getting uh, ordinances codified, which is something I'm required to do. Um, I have a quote to update the code book through the end of 2023, and that quote would be for no more than $4,700. Are you asking for approval? Yes, please. Okay. How many books do they provide? Just. I don't remember the exact number. Mainly, they provide everything. I mean, it's online now, too. So I really don't ask for a lot of printed books because they're yeah. just not. We'll get one for Wayne, so he has it. I mean, the copies that I have have been sitting collecting dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Entertain a motion for codifying the books. I'll make a motion to hire the company that uh, Karen recommended for codifying the ordinances. Moved by Mr. Shardy. I'll second. Second by Mr. Githens. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Just a reminder, we are going to have a work session on April 11th uh, at 5 p.m. prior to the council meeting. Um, Jeff Rao is coming down from Baker Tilly to review the water and sewer rate studies um, that are being updated, I think, for the second time. Um, usually by this time of year, we've had a board of finance meeting, and it is not, beginning of this year has not gotten off to a smooth start for my office. Um, and so I don't have that information to you yet, but I would like to have a meeting prior to March 28th. That gives me a goal to get it done. Um, and I'd like to have that meeting at 610. It'll only take about 15 minutes for me to review the information. I'll try to have it to you prior, um, but that would be in between the redevelopment commission meeting and the council meeting. And that gives redevelopment an hour to a little over an hour to me, if that's okay. Um, I will advertise that. Um, I want to thank Kevin for reviewing the annual financial report. Um, Ginny wasn't able to do it. I said I attached it in my email earlier and realized I hadn't. And I just so I prior to this meeting, I sent you out a copy of it just so you can take a look. Um, I would ask you to review it if you see anything that might look kind of off. I can go back in and edit it and then resubmit it. Um, but I do want to have your approval of it uh, in the minute to be reflected in the minutes. Um, because State Board of Council wants to know that your eyes have been on it as well. Um, I also, in my report, listed out the reports that I submitted in January and February, and I won't bore people with that, but there's a lot. Um, and there's three reports, big reports left, and that's the Redevelopment Commission report, the ARPA funding report, and the water loss audit that I have to do in the next two months. Um, the new phones arrived yesterday and were installed. Um, they are not online yet. Um, we have the port numbers over from AT&T, but once they do go live, um, people will notice a difference when they call Town Hall. Um, it'll be a, an answer tree, so you won't hear Julie, my, or Kevin's voices saying Culver Town Hall anymore, um, but you'll be able to access somebody directly. So you could press one for, I don't remember what, what all it is, but you can access Kevin directly to myself, Julie. You can also access the police department, EMS, um, 
the utilities, the park, and um, it, I think it'll take it'll provide a an easier opportunity for you all to re to reach the person that you want. Um, it also has uh, voicemail, and that those voicemails are converted to emails. So we get emails, um, and we can forward phones to cell phones, which is which will be nice. Um, the the utility billing system. We are um, in month two of billing out of the new system, and it's going probably 75% well. I mean, we still have some hiccups. We're still finding little things here and there, uh, but Julie has been working hard to get those issues taken care of. Just want to remind everybody that gets their email, their bills by email, that it is coming from no reply at utilitybillingsystems.us as opposed to what it used to be. And honestly, I don't remember, so I apologize. Um, but I've had a couple people um, upset because they didn't see that email and so they didn't pay their bill and they were giving late fees. Um, I had one person specifically re request that I come to you. He, he, he requested that I waive it. I told him I wasn't able to do so on my own out of the council decision. Um, and so I'm bringing it to you on whether or not to credit the late fee to this person. Um, but I would, I think in my report, I also said, you know, it's, you're going to have to kind of make some sort of um, decision because if you give it to one, you may have to do it to others, to be fair. So um, I think we tried to get the word out that this was coming today and I'll just leave it at that. I'm sure people have other opinions. Do you think it's worth it to, just as a mm -hmm. thought process, put something out there that, you know, a late fee would be waived the next 90 days after that, and the late fee is waived very early. Well, I think there's time. You see what I'm getting at? Well, I guess if, if you're going to do anything, my one recommendation would be if someone had received their bill by, by email for the month of and received a, a late fee in oh, what is it? February 15th, that was the first month, right? That we would waive that late fee. But we'll waive. No that's the only one going forward. But we're done. So they get one 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 late fee. one late fee waived, and then the that's for till the cutoff date, or just open ended. I would ask. no. I would say you get January waived, and that's it. No, okay. and then you just do it across the board for any for whoever was late, who received it by email. If they got it by mail. They should have gotten it sure. because it's not the postcards anymore. It's a full fledged envelope and it looks really nice. Um, so I guess if if that's the way you want to go, that would be my recommendation. But it would be a one time, and it's going to take some work on our end to figure that out. It's just one individual. It is one individual that requested, but I'm sure there's other people that if you grant it to this person, there's other other people yeah. will pop up. So I would rather than going for several months and having several emails as people are hearing about this, do one blanket, do it once, and be done. Yeah. Sally, what are your thoughts? I don't do mine by email. I don't know whether it showed up. You know, I think some people had. I think some of them went to spam because it wasn't recognized. Right. I think the first month mine went to spam, but then the second month I got mine. Yeah, and uh, you know, I can certainly, you know, uh, understand if it goes to spam or, you know, they didn't recognize it, so they didn't read it. They just deleted it. Um. So uh, I would say I don't have a problem with giving people a rebate on that. So, let me just say the first one. On the first the month. First month. The first month. What do you think, it's Bill? Like, yeah. I, I think just one month. I mean, that's why okay. I asked the question. Yeah. Did you want to have a stop period or a recommendation in just one month? I'm well yeah. with that. Yeah. Because it may take people a while to figure it out. Yeah. Particularly if it went to spam, I mean. Yeah. I like um, that motion that we give them one month reprieve, dated back to. Yep. 
first, the first month, month of billing. The first month of billing. So that would be the February billing. And that's we'll confirm no, we'll that. We'll confirm that because we'll or whatever the first yeah, month of billing was. Like, okay. It's on the new system. Well, on the first month of billing on the new system. Yes. For okay. email. Yeah. By email. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay, Mr. Githens made the motion. Ms. Rashardi seconded. Any further discussion? Not all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, two more things. I apologize for the length of this, um, but it has been three weeks since the last meeting. So, um, with the new system, there is um, what's called next bill pay. That um, when people log into their account, they can click. It says pay your bill here. They can click on that. It'll take them to the credit card system. They can either pay by credit card. They could pay by check. Um, have the the bill deducted from their account. Um, I would, I'm asking for permission to go ahead and get that set up with next bill system. We will continue to do, to accept or to continue to do ACH payments because honestly, at the end of the day, the ACH that we do is cheaper than using this next bill pay. Um, as is, a, a, unless you're paying more than $99 on your credit card, um, it's cheaper to go with pay up. But at the same time, for people for convenience, if they want to use this next bill pay, it's up to them. And um, so, if I could get approval, approval to do, um, to sign with them. Does it? What's the fee to the? Um, yeah. It's on. It's here. I emailed all of it out. Yeah. There you go. You can keep it. I just didn't remember it all. Yeah. Okay. So. Right now, with pay, so if you're doing ACH and you're not with Everwise, it's fifteen cents a month, which is. Right. Um, right. But the um, for credit cards with PayGov, it is a dollar for any charge under thirty dollars, and then three percent for a charge is over thirty dollars. Okay. And I figured it up with that one. You kind of have to make it. You have to have a bill of ninety nine dollars or more to have it cheaper. Okay. Um, and everwise still so. takes the payment on the tenth or. Yeah. Yeah, we still generate that. So on the time. That is, nothing has changed there. Nothing's going to change with the other option. Okay, that's so my question. This is just an additional. I understand that. Thank you. And I can have a motion to approve contracting with next bill pay for the utility payment collection. So moved. <laughs> by Mr. Githens. I'll second. Second by Mr. Shari. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 For the same sign. There have been a lot of changes in our office, and there's a couple. Coming. So, um, the last thing I have, just letting you know, I will be out next week. I'm going to be in Plainfield, uh, the annual Island Indiana League of Municipal Clerks and Treasurers Institute and Academies. Um, classes that start Sunday afternoon with two classes. I believe we're starting at three and going till five. And then um, we meet Monday through Thursday, Monday through Wednesday. It's, uh, I think it's eight to five. Tuesday night, we have an evening session, and then we go until noon on Thursday. Um, I'm actually involved in teaching three classes during the week, and I've helped organize a couple of other ones. Um, but I attached a list of the classes that, that we're offering throughout the week, so it should be a good week of learning. And that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Karen. Karen, are you online? Yeah. yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK, thanks for letting me participate virtually tonight. Um, the only thing I had was to report back last meeting. Uh, Councilwoman Monroe uh, brought to your attention uh, some questions about an audit of the uh, Marshall County tourism and asked that I follow up on that. I, I spoke with uh, County Attorney Jim Clevenger and he noted that the county had made contact with the State Board of Accounts about that and that audit is set to occur uh, at the same time, the county has their next state board of account audit. So it's not a separate audit that would happen immediately. Uh, so I would anticipate sometime before the end of the year that would occur. And as soon as I have any more information on that, I will uh, report back to you. But unless you have any questions of me, um, I appreciate you let me participate virtually, but I'll sign off if there's nothing you have uh, for me now.
I don't have any questions. I don't either. I don't think we do, uh, Sean. All right. Thanks so much. Have a good evening. Uh, Sean. Yes. Yeah. Kevin Dante. Um, the Howard easement. Did Jim get a hold of you on that? No, I haven't heard anything from him on that. Just appreciate that. I'll follow up with you tomorrow if you're available. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I will. Um, so we have one person online that raised their hand some time ago, and I tried to message to say you know, what is it about, but I know we're easing into this new format. So if you're willing to take comments at this time, um, Craig, if you want to unmute, that will, you can ask your question. Go ahead. Who's ever online? Hi, everybody. This is Craig at 522 South Main Street. Thanks, Karen, for finally acknowledging me. I did have some questions during public dialogue or public concern, and I'm just hoping that you'll be they're simple. Uh, the first one is a, a comment about the change of meeting dates and the change of agenda. And I'm just curious. It seems like you you say you want public comment, but it seems the changes are meant to stifle public comment. And I'm OK with that because you, you run the council. But I think as as citizens that pay taxes and people that live in a zone that's getting ready for a lot of construction, you know, my wife and I always have a lot of concerns and we don't always know the questions that we want to ask until we hear everybody speak. But the first question that's burning on my mind because it's a new council and the meetings were changed is I can see some empty seats. Now I saw Sean, Sean online, but I would like to know, are, are, we, are you guys accountable to us for why there's two council members missing from this meeting? And are we allowed to know why they're not at the meeting? That's my first question. I'll address it if you yeah so mrs monroe had a prior commitment as did mr near and both of those commitments were prior to the the meeting night change and so that's why they're not here awesome my second and third question are for kevin kevin you mentioned the summer traffic study do you have target dates in mind for that study and the areas that you will be covering Yes, in particular, uh, I would like to see traffic again, and I'm going to contact Maycon for that traffic study again. Keep in mind, these are probabilities and these are projections, not hard data, but we're going to take a look at current conditions on Ohio Street and Mill. I'd also like to know more about South Main and as well as West Shore around the corner. I'd like to see where the traffic is flowing and time of day in particular. So those are my target dates. I can't be more specific than other than July. I think that is by most numbers. When I look at like wastewater numbers, other numbers indicate that's probably the busiest time at Culver. And I think those numbers might provide a basis. But again, I think we have to take them with a grain of salt. OK, thanks for answering that. That's a, that's a good answer. My second question, and it, it got a chuckle uh, when it was mentioned at a previous meeting, but you all talked about the possibility of a roundabout down there where South Main curves to Davies and then curves back by the Baker House. And I know it was a chuckle and I know it's going to be studied, but if they determine that a roundabout is needed in that area, if it's necessary, who pays for it and how long does something like that take or disrupt traffic? Yeah, I can't answer that question. I think any answer I'd offer you on that would be visceral and probably misinformed. I could tell you this, the town would have to incur that cost in the roundabout. There's no other ways around it. And that's what one of the major points in the negotiation process with the developer, as I mentioned to Mr. Mason tonight, was I wanted to make sure that we were capturing TIF money going back into redevelopment for improvements. They are consuming capacity. There's no denial of that. We have to put it back. They are going to change our traffic flow. There are adjustments. Keep in mind, Tech Culver in 2010 was a town of 1,560 some odd people. I can't get the exact count, but that's pretty close. We are down, really starting to move towards 1,000 quickly. We are built to handle this kind of traffic, but there are going to need to be adjustments because that is a whole new area of development. The difference is we haven't had that kind of population concentration on our south side. That's the reality of it. That is new buildings, new traffic flow, new patterns. 
That has to be studied. Now to your original question, and I'm not trying to move away from it. The roundabout is one possible solution. Obviously we're looking for cost effectiveness and one that moves the traffic the most effectively. Till I get engineers to answer that question, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend to be one. Is that all right? That's awesome. I I just know it's been bannered about. I've seen people out there. Um, I know there was some chuckles back and forth because, you know, the term roundabout means different things to different people. And some people love them. Some people hate them. But fact of the matter is every study that you can ever do said it alleviates issues. So I, I'm not for it against it right now until I hear, but I, I want to be informed that that's right down the street from the house. And, you know, we've talked about traffic. Maureen's talked about traffic. You you guys have no idea how much traffic goes down that street right now, even in the dead of winter and how much it rattles everybody's house. So you have to remember the houses that are there were there before the road. The road was put in after and you didn't take care of all the residents of that road by giving them a proper driveway, a proper sidewalk. And, you know, those kind of things concern people like us that are, you know, living there year round. So we've been kind of quiet for a long time. But after this fiasco with being without water for 97 days with no answers, you know, I start asking a lot more questions and I start digging around and I start talking to people. And I, I want when I have a question, I want to be able to ask, ask it at the appropriate time, not an hour later or not before every council issue goes. And I, and I just think it should be you should be fair to one and fair to all. And, and I want to thank you for letting me speak today. Greg, I appreciate the feedback. Again, like we said, this agenda is not meant to stifle you. It's an experiment. You have real concerns, real feedback. I'd appreciate you emailing me so I don't lose track of your feedback. You always have that option. The second thing I would say is uh, don't assume bad intentions here. We're not trying to stifle you. We're not trying to move you. We have a public dialogue of concern that's concentrated, and then the dialogue that comes after is open-ended. So, but this is a growing pain thing, and we have to be able to speak to one another. So please email those comments to me so I don't lose track of them. If you don't mind, I don't want to boss you around, but I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I totally understand. The other thing is, and this is a visual, visual comment, I use the closed captioning, and Kevin, you speak so fast during the meeting that the captioning can't even keep up with you. So it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard for someone to follow that's close captioning because it is you are kicking its butt. Don't feel bad now. Uh, my wife would love that comment. Please yeah. Zeus, send that to me an email too so I can share it with her. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll Thank do better. You. you guys have a great weekend. Thank you. Karen, did you look like you had somebody else? No, that was the only one. Okay. No, and I was trying to communicate with him via chat to say, you know, what are you good. wanting to address? And I did that twice with no response. So I wasn't trying to ignore him either. Oh, okay. Console issues. Sally? I don't have any issues at this point. I don't have any, Bill. None. Um, motion to adjourn. I'll make Go a on. motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh. I was going to change something that I had said earlier, but I guess I can't do that. You, I'll just go, you go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm the same person. Okay. Ginger <laughs> Budges, 232 South Main Street. Okay. I quoted um, the bulk cart permits with a total of 14400 earlier. For each for all the permits. Actually, there are six over 600 golf carts. So we have $60 for each permit that comes to at least $36,000. Well, it's one that bad, as opposed to the 14000 All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs>